This is the opening presentation of this two days program. This being said, let me let me move to the more academic side of my presentation, which will be brief, but I would like to say. Uh, when we think about religion and COVID, there are many topics that might arise and there are many elements that can be of interest uh, to research. However, I think that from the beginning we need to uh, make two preliminary remarks or to, to be very aware of there are two different things that we have to take into account. The first is trying to go beyond the traditional understandings of religion and science. The boundaries between religion and science are not fixed, nor stable, but are continuous and subject to constant negotiation. In a way, secularization theory uh, created an image, in an image of religion and science as two different blocks that were opposite and were competing against each other as, as a homogeneous block. Nowadays, research in sociology of religion, but also research in sociology of science, has shown us that the boundaries between religious and science are more porous than we expected before. And also, we already know that both spheres, religion and science, are highly heterogenic, which makes it right to take them as abstract and, and as disembodied categories religion and science take place in many different settings and in each setting that they take place, they take different forms, they take different meanings, they, they interact, intersect in different ways with, the, with uh, local conditions. So it's important to take into account that we cannot uh, use this historical uh, image of, of religion and science as two separate and homogeneous and fixed and stable categories. And also because religion and science are not two separate blocks, totally opposite and competing against each other in a zero, zero sum, sum game. As, as the COVID has shown us in a way, uh, religion and science are not totally uh, separated and not, not that are competing in this zero sum game, but are uh, in a way um, related and, and, and generating new conceptualizations, new articulations that uh, give place to different uh, situations. Also, I, I, I recommend you the, the work of Silke Gulker in, in, in Leipzig, who really, uh, sh really shows how uh, science and, and religion, science has traditionally been considered as the rational side, religion as the irrational side, but sometimes categories of rational and irrational are much more complex than, than this kind of uh, easy images of science of religion has. Trans Given uh, that we have uh, used. So, and the second uh, preliminary remarks is, is a necessary distinction between uh, what the pandemics has provoked, produced, or generated, and what the pandemics reveal or has revealed. So, this is, is, is an analytical conception, but I think that's important to take into account when we do research in between religion, science, and and COVID, there are some uh, elements, some characteristics of this, e, uh, this, this uh, epoch that we are living in that have been provoked by the COVID and have been produced and have been generated by the, the, the illness. However, there are some elements that were already there, but the pandemics in a way reveal or, or make visible these conditions. I think that uh, we can take the pandemics as a bre breaching experiment. I don't, I'm not sure if you are familiar with the work of Harold Garfinkel, a famous ethnomethologist, uh, that he said that sociology and social science in general can get new knowledge about, uh, the, about situations when uh, breaching experiments are provoked, when there are some kind of uh, rupture into the reality that helps to uncover tacit understandings embedded in the normative order of society. So in general sense, I, I, I think that current research on religion, science and COVID needs to take these two uh, preliminary remarks into account. First, to go beyond this classical and dichotomic vision of religion and science, and second, try to analytically distinguish between what the pandemics provoke and what the pandemics reveal. This being said, I'm gonna organize the, the, the following minutes in, in three, three research blocks or three research axes that, that help me to think about how we can uh, analyze uh, the role of religion and science in the in the pandemic uh, 
uh, in pandemic times. The first question is the why questions, imaginaries of the pandemic. So how religious and scientific narrative provide new meanings to make sense of, of the why question, why the COVID, why the pandemic, why, and how these uh, imaginaries uh, use religion and science in a different way. In, in, in some sense, uh, we cannot say that there's a, uh, only one prototypical religious uh, narration and one, prototypical, uh, one typical scientific narrative, but better there are these two scientific and religious narratives that are in tension in some places, in negotiation, in conflict, in multiple uh, imaginaries. And what, as a sociologist, I think that our role is try to understand what kind of imaginaries are being created, by whom, in which ways, how these imaginaries produce new knowledge about who we are, what's going on, uh, how, what does it mean? And also, it's interesting to see that these new imaginaries uh, use uh, material coming from many different sources, popular cultural, historical texts, religious texts, scientific discourses, and other cultural materials. So the, the first question is try to see how religion and science are being used, are being um, articulated into the narrative or in the imaginaries of the, of the pandemics. And also interesting in this wide question is how these religious and scientific narratives are articulating the past, how uh, this, this is this image of Jerusalem, no, of this uh, of the, the church that was, uh, the, the, it was very powerful, the idea that uh, the church has never been closed, uh, only in the black black. No, See, this idea of this genealogy of this lineality uh, from the black flag to our days, how we look at the past and how this past, in a way, uh, he helps us to understand the present and how this past is also interpreted in religious or in scientific terms and how it's used in this present. Then how, is there, how they are articulated to understand the present. And also, and even more important, I think that as a sociologist, we have a job there in trying to understand how religious and scientific narratives are projected towards the future. What role for religion in the future? What role for science? What role religion and science have in these kind of utopias or dystopias that in a way mark our way of acting? Because these ideas of the future are not only ideas, are also programmatic ideas that sometimes can uh, strongly influence our way of, of, of working, our way of acting, our way of, of, of thinking about the present. So this is uh, the first uh, question that I think that as a sociologist or as a, as, a, as a social scientist, we need to understand the why question and how religion and science get articulated into this why. The second question is a bit different. It's about the how the pandemic, no, if the, the first one is why, the second is how the pandemic will be stopped and looking for solutions and what kind of role science and religion play in bringing, uh, in, bring, in bringing this kind of solution and in defining this kind of solutions. And which are the solutions? Is the solution the prayer is the solution, the medicine, the both, which kind of, how also uh, there are some kind of cognitive uh, negotiations about the different type of solutions and the impact. So uh, as, a, as, a, as a researcher, there's a new challenge there trying to, to see how religious but also scientific groups and the rest of the population define the cause of the problem and then the definition of the perceived solution. And also it's, it's interesting to see if there's a correlation between the definition of the cause of the problem, if I think, for instance, that we have COVID because uh, climate change, or we have COVID because uh, the devil, or because if this kind of conceptualization about the cause of the problem impact upon the definition of the perceived solutions, or if not, if I might say that the devil has brought us COVID, but then I might accept that science is a solution. So how this kind of negotiation tensions between different discourse are articulated in projecting the solutions. And then in a more practical, in a more practical way, there's also the question, the important question about the role of the religious group. What role do the religious group have in this pandemic? Do 
religious group build, help to build trust uh, between religion and science, driving a pre previous collaboration. Here, for instance, last week I was at a, I attended a very interesting conference by Hans Jörg Dirlies from Berlin, who was explaining how the HIV uh, experience has helped some African countries in order to deal uh, with uh, with COVID and in order to um, generate new networks of trust between religious and scientific and political uh, communities. So to what extent uh, religious group work as a, as a, as a collaborators not and in which circumstances and in which con con context. Then the, the second uh, is COVID creating a new space for religious secular competition? Are negotiations groups playing or working to make this religious secular competition harder? Are, are, what's what the role in between this historical religious secular cleavage? How is being redefined in, in present times? And finally, and I think that Anna will talk, and I hope we'll talk a bit more about this, but it's about this paradoxical alliance, how, how in a way, for instance, kind of leftist new ages or, or, or uh, some kind of a spiritual movement that historically we identified as left is a, then get together with uh, new right wing groups in generating conspiracy new conspirative uh, narration. So how in a way uh, the actors uh, are redefined in this, in this religion and science uh, alliance. And in order to, to finish soon, uh, the last question that I think that it's important, no, I said the why question first, the, the, the what to do, uh, the second and, and the third one is how to cope with life in COVID times and what role for religion and science. And this is uh, the pragmatic question about what, what, what role for religion and for science when, when we are, for instance, in lockdown and lockdown. No? Here, clearly, there are many questions regarding the transformation of the community, the idea of the community. What, what does it mean to belong? Who do you belong? How these communities are being transformed depending on, 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 on religion also, but also on science. What does it mean that you only can meet six people? How these six people influence the way that you see the world and you organize your life and so on? The second question is about the materiality of religion, how these new artifacts, new practices, how religion is being uh, lived and, and produced in a way through new artifacts, new practices generated by this scenario. Then the religious experience. How does the, religion, the religious experience change in this context in between on and off life? There has been already quite a lot of research about media, religion, and the experience of media in the internet times. And I think that this is the case that the COVID has in a way accentuated this, this, the need to look and to do research in this line. And, and another thing that is important, and I'm not gonna go deep into this, this but I think that has a, has a role there, is the identification of life and new conceptions of health. What kind of impact have all these kind of graph, maps, uh, numbers that are being displayed all the time in the media, uh, that, that, that are being around and give new kind of meaning about what life means, what life, the, 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 the percentages and, and how these numbers uh, have some impact on us. So uh, just in order to, to, to be finishing, you know how this, uh, this, uh, uh, research or these new research challenges that emerge in between at the intersection of religion and, and science are also interesting. Are also very interesting if you if we look at the micro sociology of the new normality. And this is the last area that I would like to to, to emphasize how this new normality generates new habits and new, new elements that gen also creates new research uh, questions, the mass, you know, the, the meaning of the mass, they are a colleague at this that are, they are researching about it. You know? To what extent the mass changes the relationship with the others, mask and masculinities, mask and the, he the niqab. Um, there are many different uh, elements that can emerge from there. The higiene also, how the, the, 
that new rituals are being uh, born in this in these pandemics, how uh, there are new rituals that emerge out of science, but maybe can be in a way religionized uh, as, as, as acquire new meanings. And also the touching experience and the new rules of sociability, how this uh, touching, how this, uh, these new rules that have emerged due to the, the, the scientific discourses change the, the dynamics of sociability and, uh, and also the dynamics of, of relationships. And finally, we would say last but not least that the meaning of illness and of the death with the the, the new rituals around the death but also the, the, the lack of these kind of rituals and, and what's gonna bring us uh, in the future and how we would like to we would need to analyze and, and do research into this into this space I'm not gonna spend more time uh, just this is uh, th th these are some very general ideas that we have been uh, elaborating in order to think what kind of research questions emerge at this intersection of religion and science in COVID times. Research is still a, a very, very early stage, but we hope that through this workshop and through future work, we will be able to give answer to some of these uh, questions. So now I finish the presentation and I give the floor to Rafael Casarín, who will introduce uh, Paul Baramana. Thank you very much. <laughs>